We got Tyler Wilson back here on the program. He's going to be fighting for some hardware coming up here on March 13th at Rise FC6. He's going to be taking on Bantamweight champion Chad and Helliger. Ty, how's it going, man? Good. How are you doing? Doing well. Uh, excited about this fight, man. Tell me how this all came together. Uh, just Saba just like randomly messaged me a couple of months ago, and it was honestly probably the most straightforward uh, setup for a fight I've had. There wasn't too much going on. What happened with your last fight for Strike Hard? Because uh, I remember we did the interview. Was the event canceled? Like, what happened? So, uh, Jose actually got like COVID. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. But he didn't have any symptoms. And I guess, I don't know, like there's like a threshold kind of thing. And I guess if you're below like 30 on the threshold marker, like, uh, like you don't actually have it. And he was at like 31. And so he just barely had COVID. So they had to cancel the fight. Gotcha. But, uh, and you made it all the way down there, right? Or did you not travel and you found out before? I found out, like, right at the weigh-ins. I, I oh, gotcha. Something. So it was, like, right yeah. before. So you got to go down there and do all that. Was there any – I was going to ask you about that. Was there any issues getting back into Canada? No. No, no, was, no one, like, said anything. Okay, good. That's good. Yeah. Um, so this is a bantamweight fight. I know last time we spoke you were kind of, you know, willing to fight in both weight classes, featherweight or, or bantamweight. Um, first time, I think, since April of 2019. Uh, I guess no hesitation. You just – you got plenty of notice for the fight. You're like, hey, I'll go fight at bantamweight. Yeah, no, I only took the 145 fight because I was kind of, like, I couldn't find anything else at the moment. I was getting restless. Uh, but, yeah, no, I'm, I'm a band of weight normally. Okay. Uh, did you know much about Chad before taking this fight? Not really. Like, I heard the name. I saw him on, like, Typology and stuff, but I didn't really, uh, yeah, I didn't really hear too much about him. Okay, well, what, uh, now that you've had a chance to, I think, assess him and everything, how do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? Yeah, I think he's good. I think he's uh, got good hands and... Uh, goes for guillotines and stuff like that. I would, he's not like amazing everywhere. He's just kind of well-rounded. Uh, yeah, I think I match up pretty well with him. And how are the restrictions right now in, in Quebec? Because you're at TriStar, right? You're training there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're stressful. Everything's kind of closed down. We've got some uh, training going on at like, I'm just going to say undisclosed locations. I was going to say, I don't uh, want Trudeau yeah. watching and uh, giving, giving you some grief or whatever. But But you've been getting in some good training by the sounds of it? Yeah, yeah, it's all been good. Yeah, That's good. Are you allowed to say who you're training with, or is that still top secret as well? Yeah, probably not. Just okay, for now. no worries. But but probably yeah. like same training partners, like sort of yeah, you know same. usual cast of characters. Okay, that's good. So yeah. when did so I was going to ask you when did you actually find out about the fight? Uh, it was before it was it was before uh, Christmas, I would think, or did you find out after? I think it was after. I think um, yeah, I think it was just after Christmas. It might have been around like New Year's, something like that, or like a couple days after. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Well, the reason I asked too is because, like I said, you're cutting a bantam weight. So, I mean, has the has the weight cut process already started, or do you that closer to fight time? Like, what's sort of your assessment with that? Uh, I kind of started like a couple of days ago. I'm um, just, yeah. It usually it usually take them like three, maybe four weeks to get down there, but not too hard. Yeah. Okay. I'm just kind of like slowly dieting. Yeah. And then in terms of like coaches and stuff, do you still have access to all your coaches, or is that like like I don't know? Do you have to do like Zoom calls, or do you get to work with some of them? Uh, yeah, I get to work. I still get to work with them, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Still good still. Yeah. Do you ever talk to GSP? Is he ever around? Does he ever, you know, hang out and stuff or no? Since COVID, I've seen him once and that was for, uh, like a promo or something like that. <laughs> okay. So it wasn't even Mass. like, yeah, he's, he's in there. Yeah. yeah. Well, mind you, I mean, you're, you're in a much smaller weight class as well. So it wouldn't really make sense there. Um, yeah. who's going to be making the trip with you? Have you figured out sort of your corner situation with all this? Yeah. So I'm going to bring a uh, David Moon. Okay. Uh, yeah, because he's from out there too, and I think he's friends with uh, Saba, the promoter and stuff. So I'm gonna bring him out. Okay, that's good. So is it just the two of you going down? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Do you uh, do you have any like uh, family out in BC at all, or no? Uh, no, not really. No. no. So have you have you been to Victoria? I was trying to remember that. No, the only other time I went to BC is for the BFL fight. So I guess I was near Vancouver or on Vancouver. Yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't even know. I, th- I think you'll probably have to fly into Vancouver and then take the ferry over. I'm not sure if you get oh, to yeah. fly directly in. I don't know. Have you got your itinerary yet? I was curious about no, that. No, no. So. I haven't even, uh, no, yeah, I haven't got anything yet. So I didn't know you had to do that. Oh, good to know. Well, yeah, no, you can, you can either fly in or you can take the ferry uh, or whatever, right? So it's, it's a little bit, little bit different there. But uh, hmm. I guess the main thing is you're just happy you're getting a fight, right? Like, was there any concern yeah. after the last fight with COVID that you're like, man, is this ever going to, you know, am I ever going to get a fight here, right? Yeah, even the last fight, I was I didn't actually believe I was going to have a fight. Even on the way there, like on the plane, I'm like, dad, it's going to mess up. And then I got there. And then finally, like, I was like, oh, maybe this will happen. And then he gets COVID. Then it gets canceled. So, yeah, I kind of, 
yeah, I got, I'm just like hoping it's going to happen, but yeah, it's just a lot of, a lot of stress. So I don't know. How's this fight playing out on March 13th? I know you've had a chance to assess them and kind of figure it out. What, what do you see? How do you see the fight unfolding on March 13th? Uh, if I, if it doesn't finish, uh, relatively quickly, I would say it's probably going to, cause he's got good cardio. So I'd say it's probably going to, it'll probably go the full five rounds unless I get him out of the, out of there in like the first round. So do you train? Do you train differently for a five round fight, or is it always the same? No, same thing. Yeah. Okay. Do you find that you've been doing more cardio like during the pandemic, just because you're not used to your regular like? Because I, I know like in some cases you can't get access to the same stuff that you're used to. Do you find that you're doing more cardio or no? Uh, no, it's been pretty similar. I guess I've been going for a couple more runs, but that's about it. Yeah, but the weather's pretty brutal out there, right? It's probably cold right now. Yeah, just wear a mask. You're fine. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, you're getting well. You're from Ontario, anyways. So you're used to the weather, right? So yeah, okay, that makes yes. sense. Um, and then, and then, you know, a, a win here. Like, where do you think that would put you? Because you'd be, you know, you'd be the champ. That always looks good on the resume. Like, you've never, to my knowledge, you haven't won a, like an actual title yet, have you? As, like during the re, on the regional scene, uh, not as a professional. I haven't won any. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I feel like. To get to a bigger promotion right now, I probably have to put the, like together a couple of wins, like get a little win streak going, and then we'll go from there. But yeah, I just want to get this one win first. Well, I mean, the timing's interesting, right? Because uh, you know, again, let's say all goes well, you you win this fight, you get the belt. Uh, you know, contender series are always looking for up and comers, and and you have a lot of fights, so I think that kind of benefits you in that way, as opposed to you know some guy only has like three or four fights. Like you have a lot, you know, you have nine fights, right? So that, that's a lot on the resume. Yeah, yeah, it'd be great. I would love to. I've seen people. All the contender series who definitely aren't that good, so I wouldn't mind getting on there. <laughs> What's that like though? Because you have all these fights and you fought really tough opposition. Like, is is it frustrating, or are you just kind of like, I know my time's coming? Yeah, at first, I think when I was younger, it kind of stressed me and kind of bugged me because I like I was like, I know I'm better than these people. But as you get older, it's just like it'll come. Whenever it happens, it'll happen, but it'll come. Yeah. Well, what about uh, downtime right now? What are you uh, What are you doing in terms of uh, you know trying to break up the monotony of training and all that? You watching any Netflix? Playing any video games? What are you doing? Uh, I just watch fights. I like yeah. I, I don't I don't really watch Netflix that much. I was I've been watching The Center I guess a little bit recently. But okay. yeah, yeah. I'll just watch fights in my free time. Or so what was what was the fight you watched recently? Like give me an example. Uh, this morning I rewatched Kamaru Usman and Gilbert Burns. Uh, What'd you think of that? I thought Kamaru was one of his best performances, especially getting yeah. the finish in that one, right? Yeah, I thought it was really good. I thought, like, because uh, he got rocked in the first round too, and he came back and like you know a lot of wrestlers how they kind of go for like the stress takedown when they get rocked or something like that. He just like kept his composure, kept striking. Yeah, I thought it was a great fight. So it was really good. Are there certain fighters you'll watch more than others? Like you like their style, or you just put on whatever fights like recent? Like how do you go about deciding what fights you're going to watch? Yeah, it depends. Uh, sometimes I'll, like, I always try to rewatch fights that just happen, but then sometimes, like, I'll watch somebody on that card, and I'm like, oh, man, I should rewatch more of them. So, like, Dustin Poirier, I went over a lot recently because of his recent fight, and just guys who I think I can kind of, like, copy in one way or another, I try to watch people like that. Okay. Were you surprised with Poirier knocking out uh, Conor McGregor, or did you expect that result? No, I was shocked. I didn't think that was going to happen. But I, I thought I if was... he won, it would be like a late submission or something, like you know, or, or a decision potentially. But to knock out McGregor, I thought that was super impressive. Yeah, yeah, especially in like the first or the second round, sorry, because that's like Connor's good round. So it's kind of crazy. It is. But, yeah, good for him. Does that inspire you, seeing you know a guy like Poirier, who's you know had had you know he had he had some setbacks right in his career, and he's here he is getting a huge win over McGregor. Is that inspiring as a fellow fighter? Yeah, definitely. I love the. Love the workhorse fighters, the guys who keep going, like Cam and Dos Anjos and, you know, Michael Bisping, stuff like that. Those are the best, best stories. This is going to be an awesome fight. It's coming up here March 13th, Rise FC6. You don't want to miss it. Uh, Tyler, anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors, any social media you want to plug? I'll give you the last word. Okay, sure. Uh, so, thank you, TriStar. Thank you, Hayabusa Academy, uh, Kaufman Homes, uh, uh, Bubba's Poutine. Thank you, Absolute Accuracy Tiling. Uh Thank you, ESS Fight and Jana Sports.